what's going on everybody i'm back with another video this video is going to be looking at how you can score goals without using an out and out striker now this is inspired by pep guardiola and their manchester city team that's absolutely crushing the premier league this year and doing so without a clear number nine so before we get into the tactics behind the video check out both my books they're online on amazon and there's links in the description below but let's get right into it. So now we're looking at still the false nine concept, but against a back five now. And in some ways, this can be even more clear when implementing a false nine than against a back four. So if we look at first how Liverpool would implement a false nine, they'd have their two wingers invert wide fullbacks of Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. And now they'd have their number nine drop and then we'd even see a holding midfielder come outside of the central defenders but for now we're going to leave him in the central area creating a double pivot and now we'll have freedom from the fullbacks our central defenders will stagger and let's put one of our holding midfielders just in the half in the half space to create some staggering in the first line and second line of build up so from here we have our inverted wingers and they're occupying each of the wide central defenders as now the wing back become oriented towards the fullbacks of this Liverpool team. So now what we are left with is an attacking midfielder and then our number nine dropping deeper. So he can often take advantage of the pinning of the wide central defenders. And this is crucial because the wide central defenders on the defensive team are the players associated with jumping. Now the most central defender, he is more of a cover player in behind the two wide center backs and doesn't jump as much because of the lack of cover he he has when he jumps into these areas. So when he jumps the most central defender into these areas, there's a lot of space left in behind which can be exploited and would be very dangerous for the defensive team to ignore if this most central defender were to jump. But now with the wide center backs pinned, we have a more clear route to progress. So now the structure we've created here has our number nine as the focus dropping deeper, taking advantage of the pinning from our inverted winger. And we can then create routes to find this player free between the lines and using the space created by his teammates. So this is more of a typical Liverpool type use of the false nine. And it puts players like Mane and Salah between defenders and in more narrow positions closer to goal. So when the ball does arrive, these players are right there to make dangerous runs in behind. Or on the weak side, they have... Mo Salah looking to get in the half space going towards goal on his left foot. So by sacrificing your number nine into a deeper position, it creates the opportunity for two other players, players to invert and get closer to goal scoring positions. So it actually increases the amount of players you have in threatening areas. Now for Manchester City, whether they go with the back four or an off-centered back four, which would then create more of a back three and have an inverted fullback to create more stability. Either or, the concept of this false nine is the same. So let's go with our back three just to show some variation with our inverted fullback. Now the reason why they're still so effective without a central forward is because of the positions they get themselves in and how they use players' qualities to the best of their abilities. So we have a player like Kevin De Bruyne on this right side, often fanning out into this deeper position. And from here, the midfielders can shift with him to then maintain the stability and presence in the half space, or he can perform an interchange with the versatile winger, coming narrow, creating more space for De Bruyne to then get into this area where he can make these diagonal crosses low and hard in behind the defense. And this is where the advantage of this deeper positioning comes from. Oftentimes, defenders will be jumping, cheating a little bit higher towards the attacking players, which allows the attackers to start their run from a deeper area, and make these runs in behind and create dynamic advantages while creating space in behind for these passes from Kevin De Bruyne. So by starting further from goal, they bait the defenders to jump higher, creating more space in behind to then access through diagonal passes. And then also we'll see Manchester City a lot of the times progress through the wide area and look to target the half spaces entering inside the box. Now these are often referred to as assist zones because of their high percentage chances that they create. So we can look at how a defense might respond if Manchester City were to get into this area 
when using a false nine. So from here, we could then simply look at a diagonal pass through the defense to a winger running through the blind side of the defender. So once this last line is broken, we're on the ball going towards the end line. And now the natural response for the defense will be to drop. And if there is no forward running, they might stop in more of a space oriented way and waiting for the number nine to drop back for the cutback. So this can be easily read by the defenders and with a free player at the near post, a man marker in the middle, and then the weak side player playing higher can be easily defended. But now we can look at different runs that are possible because of this false nine. The attacking midfielder on the weak side can curve his run to go to the back post for a low hard cross. And by playing on this weak side, he plays in the blind spot of the defenders making him much harder to mark. Our number nine has a few decisions. He can either go to the near post, pushing the defense back, allowing for our strong side attacking midfielder to make the run towards the cutback, putting him closer to goal. So the key areas for the goal scorers are the spaces directly inside the frame of goal in between the defenders and the goalkeeper. And then also the place right by the penalty spot where we often see a lot of cutbacks but cutbacks are only as useful as the runs in front of them so with our number nine making this run he'll have to be tracked by the defenders creating space for the number eight and by positioning between the lines these players are able to affect the defense especially the three central defenders and easily get away from the midfielders because of their positioning just ahead of the midfielders so if these runs are well timed the midfielders won't be able to track them because their starting positions they'll have two or three yards advantage on these midfielders so this is possible because of these deeper positions and the variation it creates. It creates the opportunity for the players to make their own decisions, whereas if we we're playing with an out and out number nine, he would start too close to goal and create more of a 1v1 duel with the defender, which if the player's quality elicits qualitative superiority, this could be very beneficial, but by playing deeper allows the players to use space more to create chances rather than 1v1 duels. And that's where we're gonna cap off the analysis. I hope you guys got something from the video and I'll see you in the next one.